Greetings, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode number 277 of Ask Dave. This is a direct follow-up to the video that we did yesterday where we took a piece of coax and made a sleeve dipole for a microwave frequency, 1090 uh, megahertz or 1.09 gigahertz. This happens to be the frequency for a system that aircraft use to send out information that can be picked up by other aircraft and by people on the ground, and that is called ADSB. Um, and uh, that was what the antenna was made for. Now, the thing that is neat is that if you have one of the um, SDR play uh, receivers, there's the RSP1A, the RSP Duo, and the RSP DX something. I mean, there's three of them. You can use any one of them. I'm using the RSP1A. Now, what you can do with this is hook that to that antenna and then use the SDR radio to listen to these ADSB broadcasts and display them graphically on a map. And we're going to do that today. Now, we don't actually use the SDR Play, uh, SDR Uno software uh, for this, but we have to download it first because we need the driver. So we're going to show downloading uh, SDR uh, Play, and then we're going to show downloading uh, something called Dump 1090, the 1090 being that frequency, and that puts out text that is received uh, from the aircraft and then we're going to download a non SDR play product uh, called virtual radar that will take that data and then display it on a web page so let's go ahead uh, through those steps right now now this is the SDR play website and we go to download software and documentation and in here we will find what we are looking for the software, first of all, that we're going to download is SDR Uno version 1.33. This is the most current software. We'll go ahead and download it to a download directory that I call SDR Play because I like to keep downloads by manufacturer. Now, I've already downloaded this, already made sure it works, but just to be sure we're going to head and, and download that. Now, the next thing that we're going to download uh, so that we can make this whole thing work is come down here and find the ADSB, which is a wonderfully named product called Dump 1090. Okay, there's lots of things in there that you can download, different uh, pieces of software entirely, but we want the S the uh, ADSB Dump 1090, and uh, note it requires API version 306. Well, that's in the SDR Play software, so we need that. So we can download this too and put it in the same uh, directory here. I'm going to cancel it because I've already done it. We're going to download the um, ADSB user guide. This is version 1.43, which is a little bit out of date. Um, in fact, the um, the instructions, the installation instructions here, the screens are now different. Um, and there's a page in here, this very last page getting started, that's got some real issues in there. And I want to go through that uh, with you when we uh, get to that point. We're going to uh, type this in. It's virtualradarserver.co.uk. Okay, now down at the bottom you see the correct one, virtual radar server with the slash download uh, slash ASPX. Now I want to mention this is not SDR Play's uh, software. It's a, a more general piece of software that will display things on maps. Apologize for my errors, I kept uh, typing in the, uh, the wrong thing there. Now, we're going to set this up on the computer. This system seems to follow um, something that I've seen a lot of people who like to be really sophisticated with software. They put servers on the computer and let the computer be a server unto itself. 
and that's going to happen with the dump 1090 which is going to act like a server and then where this uh, virtual radar um, is going to act like a server and then we're going to use uh, a uh, web browser to actually look at the results now we go on the download windows installer and be careful with these make sure that really does download the software and is not downloading um, some kind of advertisement or something like that in this case it really is correct uh, this is virtual radar setup uh, which I've already uh, done on uh, my computer to start dump 1090 first and you go under SDR play because we got this from SDR play there are four versions of this to look at high performance standard performance interactive non-interactive go ahead and pick the high performance interactive it's probably going to run fine on your machine now what this will do and I'll move the window up here so you can see it it opens up a DOS box and the DOS box it's taking information from uh, the radio and converting it into text now we need to start the virtual radar notice it's up and recently added but let's go down and see where it is normally it's under virtual radar okay and we click virtual radar and we get after a quick splash screen we get this view right here now we need to go into tools and uh, we're going to go into options we've got some options that we need to look at because we need to set up a so-called receiver this is going to receive the output of dump 390 okay click on the receiver there and we want one that has the beast feed there are all different kinds as you can see here different kinds of feeds we need the beast feed all right and then now note the address 127001 is in fact your own computer um, and 30,005 is the port we need it's going to come up with 30,003 you need to set it to 30,005 now we click on the blue link there and here it is right here okay these are aircraft that are currently being seen uh, from my home site and you can watch them here all you want they'll leave little tracks the blue dot is where I am my home location and each ring is 25 miles so that one uh, aircraft there is a hundred miles away I'm sorry 50 50 miles away we are looking at uh, the menu options we here click there's the menu options we look at options you can see there are a lot of options including setting your current location the default current location is somewhere outside of London so you're going to have to move that uh, you've got all kinds of things you can do on the uh, like range circles and so on the aircraft details that will be displayed uh, different kinds of lists what you can do with them and filters and there are a million different kinds of filters here okay so you can do a lot of things it's very interesting there are other menu items that uh, you know you can have the uh, audio uh, say something if and when an aircraft is detected there's layout options this option here has the map in the left and uh, you can get reports and map layers all different kinds of things here so you can see what's going on I'm gonna brighten up the map a little bit here I don't like it quite that dark okay and this is it Wow we are looking at aircraft on the display so this was a sort of a whirlwind tour uh, just in review we downloaded the SDR play software uh, offline I started it so we could uh, make sure everything worked and what that did that was important for the ADSB is it loaded the driver for the hardware okay now note when we do the dump 1090 and the uh, virtual radar we do not start SDR play dump 1090 
does it for us. It takes the output of the radio at 1090 megahertz or 1.09 gigahertz, converts it to text, the text output of the ADSB that's on the aircraft. And then virtual radar, which is a different program entirely, goes in and takes the text from dump 1090 and turns it into a map display. It also goes so far as to look on the internet for pictures of that particular aircraft. So there's a lot of stuff that's available and you can set up your screen uh, any way that you want. Now I live with mountains all around so I don't see uh, aircraft terribly far away unless they're very high. I saw one 100 miles away but it was at 40,000 feet. Uh, so the ones that are here in the local valley are going in and out of Montrose or mostly just flying over us. Well, there you have it. That's what we did with the antenna we did yesterday. And until we next meet, which will be tomorrow, 73.